you've ever had the chance to take a really good class on American public policy, I will bet you a $600 Pentagon hammer that one of the case studies you did when it came to talking about public policy in the military was about this guy, the F-22 fighter jet, the Raptor, they call it. Just as an aside, Ford also calls its awesome new off-road ready pickup the Raptor. Maybe because they had some inkling that the F-22 airplane wasn't going to be monopolizing that nickname anymore. That's because the F-22 Raptor is now dead. There are still F-22s in America's armamentarium, but we are not building any more of them than were already in the works. That was announced today by the president, after months of foreshadowing by the Pentagon and the president himself. The reason this plane is such a great case study in how our country works or doesn't work is because of the way it was built. The F-22 was designed in the 1980s to fight mid-air dogfights, plane-to-plane fighter jet aerial combat with pilots from the Soviet Union. From the beginning, the Air Force designed the plane to be politically bulletproof. They farmed out all the subcontracts to build the thing to something like 44 different states. So there would be jobs associated with building the plane in the jurisdiction of something like 88 different senators and a majority of members of the House. It was designed from the beginning to be, in, in one weapon designer's words, too big to fail as a government program. And the Pentagon Comptroller from the mid-1990s admitted to Congress this year that the Pentagon also knowingly lied about the expected cost of the F-22 from the very beginning. They told Congress it would cost much less than they knew it actually would. In the end, the F-22 became the mother of all spending disasters. Maybe not the mother, but at least one of the, patri uh, one of the members of the family matriarchy. The average cost of every F-22 is now $356 million per plane. $356 million per plane. And these planes are kind of a disaster. According to Pentagon test results leaked to the Washington Post this year, for every hour that an F-22 is in flight, it requires more than 30 hours of maintenance. On average, the plane reportedly suffers a critical failure after every 1.7 hours in the air. One former Lockheed engineer told the Post that the skin's radar-absorbing super high-tech skin also has what's described as a, quote, vulnerability to rain. Think Wicked Witch of the West and Dorothy throwing water on her, right? The F-22 also has the handy feature of being technologically incapable of communicating with any other warplanes. So the pilots of an F-22 are completely isolated from any other U.S. aircraft in the skies. They can't hear them or talk to them. One consequence of the political trick of building parts for this thing in more than 40 states is that there are also huge quality control issues that become evident when you try to piece all those parts built all around the country together into one plane. Pierre Spray, a weapons designer and longtime critic of the F-22, told MSNBC Today that even now, in 2009, parts that don't work are being retooled and refit individually by hand on the final assembly line as F-22s are being built. How efficient. Also, by the way, the USSR, these F-22s were designed to let us dogfight with, doesn't exist anymore. No F-22 has ever flown a mission in Iraq or in Afghanistan. Its armor is so light it can't withstand even small arms fire. So it can't fly anywhere where it has to fly low. And did I mention they cost $356 million each? Despite everything wrong with the F-22, despite the untold billions we didn't spend, even within the military, even within the Air Force, on stuff we might have actually used someday, instead of these Soviet fighting Top Gun movie souvenir paperweights that melt in the rain, the, the fact that they were built all over the country and that we had dumped so many billions of dollars into them already made these planes a case study for how the country could end up spending billions upon billions of dollars for something everybody knew we didn't need. The F-22 showed how you could design a system so that every decision maker had a great locally driven reason to do something that was bad for the country. And then something totally unexpected broke out. Political leadership. In the 2008 election, both major party candidates had the guts to defy those parochial interests and to be willing to say no to a fighter jet of all things. And they had the guts to say enough is enough to this zombie spending suck that no one could justify but that just wouldn't die. Once President Obama was elected, Defense Secretary Bob Gates took the zombie on. And with regard to something like the F-22, if we can't bring ourselves to make this tough but straightforward decision, where do we draw the line? 
And if not now, when? If we can't get this right, what on earth can we get right? Senator John McCain, Republican, and Senator Carl Levin, the Democrat who chairs the Armed Services Committee, ended up co-sponsoring the bill to kill the zombie F-22. Republican Bush holdover, Defense Secretary Bob Gates championed it, as you just heard. President Obama threatened to veto the defense budget if it didn't kill the F-22. And today, it finally died. And America's longtime textbook case study of stupid stuff on which we spend billions, even though we know it's stupid, has a surprise ending. There are still going to be 187 of these bad boys in America's fleet, and who knows, maybe the USSR will rise from the dead and give us a use for them someday. But until that day comes, the only conceivable way we would ever have to or want to use one of these planes is if we were stupid enough to sell them to other countries who might want to use them against us someday. Did I mention that members of Congress are urging that we keep building this thing to sell it to other countries? Are you kidding me?